Peace, peace, everyone. Welcome once again to um, sketching session. And this is Master Menelak, of course. Um, you know, hopefully your day went well. You know, peace to everybody who's going to be coming through a little later. Peace to everybody who may be coming through for the first time. Welcome. This is your first time. This is not a class. You know, it's not um, it's not me pretending like I know stuff. You, you're basically watching me practice and study, honestly, and explore certain concepts. And um, by explaining them out loud, it helps me to retain and review information. And I don't know, hopefully in the future, I can look back and be like, um, wow, I came, I came far, <laughs> you know, came far with just studying these concepts and, and putting in work and maybe even going as far as um, learning from other people as well. So, yeah. But without further ado, today's session is basically built around shapes. Right, we're going through the seven elements of art. Uh, what what's defined as or described as the seven elements of art, um, which would be line, um, shape, form, value, texture, space, color. I think I, I think I got all seven this time. I don't know. But um, <laughs> we're talking about shape, and it's very difficult to separate shape from form, right? And it's doing at the bottom of the screen. I think I got all, yeah, I think I got all. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's very difficult to talk about shape without talking about form. And that's what we're gonna be exploring next time. But this time we're just dealing strictly with two dimensional shapes because I don't want to, um, I don't want to conflate the two because they both have their own purpose and shapes are like, I don't know, in terms of our ability to conceptualize reality, shapes are like the ancestors of form, right? Um, peace on the radio. Shapes are like um, the grandparents, you know, you have, um, I can't see the name, but I'm assuming that's even <laughs> right, see peace. Let me see. Okay, that is you. Yeah, please, my guy. But yeah, you you look at shapes like um, a more simplified form. So shapes are two D, two dimensional, um, and forms are three dimensional. Okay, so that's the easiest distinction or the greatest distinction between the two. So we know our basic shapes. Um, I went over them briefly. I think last class. I mean. Look at me, class, right? Last segment. And I was basically going over how to simplify complex forms. You know, like if you had a camera, you could just start with, like this is the form, this is three dimensional. If you had a camera, you can just draw a rectangle and make it like cuboid by adding another dimension, which we'll get to in terms of dimensions. Same thing with the car, or you can just use two dimensional shapes to a map of how you, how you may want a character to look or how you may um, see someone, right? And I was using, I think, I think this is The Incredibles. Yeah, I was using The Incredibles as an example. Um, but yeah, you got your basic shapes. I, I don't want to waste paper, so I'll put them out. Um, of course, you have circles. And you have triangles. Um, squares. And what else? Rectangles. I don't know. If I miss any shape, call them out. Um, but these four right here will, will get you very far, you know, um, these four are any combination of the four, right? So let's get into these, well, before we get into quadra quadrilaterals, we can get into triangles, right? Since they have the least amount of size, and then we can go up from there. So triangles, um, you have tri, of course, and then you have angle. 
So try meaning three angle dealing with the sides and the, the interior, um, the plane changes, right? How sharp these planes change or how, how sharply the sides change direction and to which degree. So of course you have your three basic triangles, which would be, I'll try my best for equilateral. Equilateral is um, equal on all sides. Then you have um, what's known as isosceles. Isosceles are equal on two sides, right? So you may have two sides of the same length and then the bottom is like a different sort of line. But I guess it would be easier to do it this way. So the, the, this one just looks like a larger equilateral. I'll do it this way. Two equal sides and then an unequal bottom. I'll do it that way. And of course you can do it other ways. Just could of course be turned this side, that side. Um, rotate it any sort of direction. But um, it's also these, right? Two angles are different. So three angles, I mean, two angles are the same. Three angles are the same. And then you may have um, a scaling triangle in which none of the angles or none of the sides are the same. Right? That one was kind of difficult for me to draw. This does look, it does look like a sideways scaling. Oh, that's why I can make this angle a little steeper. A little steeper. Okay. Maybe do something like that. Make that a little steep. Make this a little steep. I think that works. <laughs> okay, so no sides are equal, right? Three different types of triangle, which would be very important moving forward in the future because these make up a lot of um, different geometric shapes that might be difficult to classify. When you're, when you're looking at something complex and you're really trying to break it down and simplify it, right? But these are your three types of triangles. And with the three types of triangles that are classified based on um, how many, the, the length of the sides. I'll put it that way, the length of the sides. Then you may have triangles that are based on the sharpness of the angle. Right, so you may have angles that are less than 90 degrees. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. My brain is so 90 degree centric. <laughs> And I'm trying to draw small too, so I don't run out of space. Okay, that's less than 90 degrees. That's less than 90 degrees. That's technically a little bit more than 90 degrees. Um, then of course you have a right angle, which is the easiest to draw, because you have 90 degrees right there. Easy to draw. Um, good for if you want to make something um, structurally strong, um, if you have a 90 degree angle. Acute angles are really good for like if you want to draw spikes. Um, what's the last one? Obtuse. Obtuse angles. The angle is wider than 90 degrees. There we go. And this acute angle is super tiny. Let me see if I can. Guess I was trying to make it small because I didn't know what I was drawing. Let 
Okay, so this is your acute angle. That's 90 degrees, 90 degrees, more than 90 degrees. Okay, and these are just different types of triangles, right? And all of these are classified as what's known, what are known as polygons. Polygons just mean, um, poly means many, and gone is, is relating to how many sides, right? Just like quadrilateral, which we'll talk about next. Quadrilateral is just four sides, right? Quad, four, lateral um, side. So quadrilaterals, you of course have your squ squares, rectangles. Rectangles could also be standing up. Very useful if you're breaking down buildings. These are useful if you're breaking down cars. Um, other quadrilaterals could be just known as a I always like this word, I don't know why. Rhombus. And you also have what's known as a trapezoid. Very useful for if you're drawing car windows. Uh, I'm gonna stop at hexagon though because it, it gets it gets silly after a while. <laughs> you have hexagons, you have heptagons, which is seven sides, octagons, eight sides, nonagons with uh, nine sides, which, which sounds funny, decagons, which are ten sides, you know. And um, we're just gonna go to hexagons and then we're gonna move forward, right? We're just going over like different varieties of shapes and we have a hexagon something that's a little um looks like some of the glasses in it you know one cool character was has those cool glasses uh, some off color yeah glasses but um, hexagons, six-sided figures. Of course, you also see these a lot when it comes to um, beehives or just technological stuff that looks cool and a very um, balanced. So it's really cool for drawing um, technology. Like you see it on plates on spaceships and, and um, fiction and things like that, right? So these are some shapes. Of course, like I said, you have I can draw it over here. That's a safe space. You have circles, which are um, indispensable, but you also have what's known as an ellipse or um, an oval. All right. So a circle, you know, circle because there's equal distance from the center to each side. The ellipses are much less so it's like an elongated form of an of a circle but these are super useful especially when you're dealing with um three dimensional forms but since we're on two dimensions right now i just wanted to get down to um uh, reminds me of a honeycomb and chemistry yeah exactly so i just wanted to move on to some of the things that you can do with them right because you have what are known as regular shapes, which we won't be talking too much about. I mean, we can cover some of them if we if we find them. Um, regular, you know, which is when all sides and angles are equal and irregular. when all sides and angles are not equal, right? Good example of irregular scalene triangle, regular um, equilateral triangle. Uh, so what can we do with this stuff that we have here? Because this is what we use to um, represent reality. Oh, peace, Arganese, peace, peace, peace. Um, yeah, this is what we, we use to 
basically make sense of reality. Plus we have the other shapes as well, but different combinations of these shapes here, whether it's circles, triangles, um, squares, rectangles, rhombuses, <laughs> rhombuses, or anything like that. This is what we use to make up reality. So I want to go through a couple of um, quick sketching exercises. And this is the point where you can feel free to join in. Even if you don't, you know, click the link, you can pull out your, your sketching utensils, you know, paper, pen, whatever have you, and you can go to work, right? So I'm going to put a couple of shapes on, not shapes, a couple of images on screen. And I just want to go through them, right? But I, I, I think I want to start with something very, very simple. But before I go through that, I just want to warm up and just create a random image. Um, yeah, just a random <laughs> image using these shapes because I think it's very key or very important to like warm up. Okay, so... I'm just gonna draw something simple and then I'm going to let you all join in. We'll probably start with something very simple and anything that feels really, really <laughs> easy to draw. You know, something you see in there, oh, I could do this. You know, so let's see, what could I draw? What do I wanna start with? Well, uh, let's start with a triangle, right? I'll draw a triangle. Uh... Oh, I, I, I know this guy. I think I know this guy. So I have a triangle, I have sort of this weird um, rhombus, not rhombus, I just like saying rhombus, this weird trapezi um, trapezoid and some weird triangles on the side here. I don't know, I can draw some lines, whatever. I'm just getting warmed up so I don't want to tense up too much. Yeah, let's look at Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> but the head, as soon as I drew the the triangle, I was like, oh, I'll draw him. I don't know if you all know him. I don't think most people will. But there was this cartoon on Disney Channel called Phineas and Verb. And he and his brother were basically a triangle and a rectangle going on adventures. That's all I saw anyway. This, this scissor hands. All of these are just basic shapes. Oh, circle there, or an ellipse. 
His shoes probably don't look like that. You look like SpongeBob shoes. Let me give him some sneakers. They're basically rectangles. I'm just drawing this person from memory. I have no idea what they look like because I barely used to watch them. I only liked it because they had a character named Perry the Platypus, which I thought was a hilarious name. Oh, now he just looks evil. <laughs> <laughs> One line could change the whole perspective. Yeah, I don't know if I trust that guy. This is why some character, cartoon characters don't have eyelids. They immediately look evil. You know, they get punched in the face. <laughs> anyway, simple warm up, right? Bunch of triangles and shapes. Yeah, the shoes look like Crocs, right? <laughs> um, yeah, man. Oh, <laughs> um, this is Sovereign Eats, like the show. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can load this up so I can see what you're talking about. I can't see anything on this big screen that I'm using. One second, let me just load up the YouTube chat on my computer. Okay, good. Now I can see what's going on. So, I gave you guys this character, here, which was really rough. Just a warm up sketch. Now we're going to go into another warm up sketch, but willfully one that you all will join in on because it is ridiculously simple, right? <laughs> it would be a really good warm up for you guys. Um, the cheese monster. Oh, let me turn this thing. I need to move a second. Oh, sorry. Okay, cool. So, first thing we're going to draw is this random cat image I saw, which is the simplest thing I, um, <laughs> I could think of to add. Okay, so that's going to be, um, showing up on the screen first. And it, I chose it because it's the least intimidating thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> right. So there we go. Random cat. So I'm going to draw some simple shapes and I'll give you an opportunity to show it to, to draw it too. So even though you can't see my hands, just draw, um, based on what we were going over, just draw something super simple using just the shapes that we went over. So you may want to use an ellipse for the body, um, triangles for the ears, or circles for the eyes, um, a rounded cylinder, I don't know, the, a stick for the tail, <laughs> and those little circles for the little nubby toes. All right, so we'll do that for like a minute. This will be on screen for a minute. And just do a quick sketch. You know, people logging on are gonna be like, what the hell? I think I clicked the wrong video.
Okay. I think a minute's passed. Yeah, so we can move it from the screen now. And you know, you can you can chime in, pop up and show yours on screen if you dare. Yeah, but um what I did was what we call simplified shapes. You know, here's my ellipse and here's my circles, circle, 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 stick. But whatever you want to call that shape. <laughs> it's basically a cylinder. I don't want to call it a cylinder because then we start going into forms, which I'm trying to avoid. I'm really trying to keep forms and shapes separate, but it's, it's super difficult. Um, so typically what happens is um, people would see something like this and they would start drawing line and they would try to draw what's known as the contours, right? The contours are your, um, what you may call an outline. They're the, the outermost lines on the shape and they appear to be what gives that shape form. But what happens is if you start off with your contours, you may start off with the contours and you realize like halfway through you're drawing that your, your lines are inaccurate or they're not measuring up, you know, all your measurements weren't as accurate as you thought they may be. And you'll wind up having to start all over again just because you didn't start with the, the basics or the building blocks, right? Which we spoke about last time, um, last session. Um, so these are basic building blocks, right? And this is already a basic shape. Um, but this isn't where you start, of course. So, uh, yes, using shapes can make it more accurate because you're laying down a groundwork first. So think of um, think of putting a building together. You know, you can try to just put up walls and a roof and put paint on the outside to make it look cool. But if you don't use um, steel or concrete or tie wire or um, you know, form work, you can wind up making a very dangerous building that is bound to fall apart the, the further you go into development. Because of course, you're, you're putting weight onto walls that should be load bearing, but they're super weak, you know, um, especially if you're dealing with your building codes in Canada and America, because you guys use a lot of wood. Over here, you can get away with it a little bit because we have to use cinder block. We have to use cement. You know, there's certain things we have to do just to make them hurricane proof. But um, if someone tries to cut corners in a house, it, it's very likely going to show in a couple of years. And it's the same is true with using shapes to um, to help you to make a more solid foundation. And at a certain point, you won't need them because you have such a good idea of shape and a good concept of form that um, it's already included. You know, the structure is already included in everything we do. You know, I don't necessarily need to draw a skull every time I draw a face, but it's helpful for me to be very, very, very familiar with the way that a skull is structured underneath that face, you know, and that helps me to make some intelligent decisions um, even if the reference that I'm looking at, it's showing me light, it's shining in, in a certain way. If someone sees the drawing and they don't see the reference, then it's good to at least have something that makes sense. So you, you may need to make, um, like sometimes you have to take certain creative licenses. Even if you're doing like a still life or a portrait, you may still need to look at something and be like, okay, the way this is showing me um, on this image, I don't think I necessarily want to draw it that way because um, even though I can see that the light is there, if I show the light source is coming from over here, then the person can clearly tell what this is, but it, it looks cooler and it makes more, it makes more sense to them without seeing the um, reference, you know, which is an odd thing to say, but it's very effective too. People do it in um, artwork and, and even movies all the time, you know, lighting source looks weird, but if you're not an artist or a nerd, you won't notice. So all I'm going to do right now is go over the contours of this um, abomination. And then we are going to move on to a little bit more complex shapes, you know. So just give me a second. 
This is where the time lapse would come in handy if it wasn't live. Right, so as you can see too, the shapes that I laid down are very light. So that when I come through and add the contours later, I can afford to add darker lines because I know that everything is in place. So I don't necessarily need to erase anymore. Um, which is more so the case with this drawing than any other ones. You still want to draw very light until the very end. It's just that this thing is so simple that I, I wouldn't really want to make another pass over it even if I needed to. Okay, so now that we're done with our anatomically correct cat, we can move on to something else, right? Um, so we'll move on to the next shape. Let's say it's a cartoon character, right? Let's say it's Bugs Bunny. How do we draw Bugs Bunny? Do we want to start with the outlines and, um, work our way into the details or do we want to start with basic shapes you know but um i mean bugs bunny is already basic shapes right it's a cartoon um and most of the looney tunes characters are basic shapes because they're meant to appeal to children you know so as soon as um background assistance you know takes the cue and as soon as they hear bugs bunny they're gonna put Bugs Bunny on the screen if they got it. You know, if they didn't get it, I'll send it again. And there we go, Bugs Bunny. So, <laughs> what do we do here? Well, as you can see with the ears, um, well, the first thing you want to do when you're sizing up something is, oh, you can actually see the size. All right, I'll put it right here. First thing you want to do is size it up and see, okay, this thing is made up of basic shapes. What are some of the basic shapes? I can tell that the ears are, um, they look like triangles and they actually also look like um, rhombuses, right? This one here. So if I turn it, eh, let's say if you look at it from this angle, right? It, it's this, but it's just slightly elongated. So his ears are actually um, sort of quadrilaterals and they're connected to, um, let's say, a circle and two ellipses. Right, so let's start with our quadrilateral. So you have one that's going out like that. And, well, actually I did that wrong. That was the first shape I saw. I think it would be much wiser. I don't want to record this bad habit. It'll be much wiser to start with the head. So I'll start down here. Just so I have room. Another bad habit. Start down here. Circle for the head. All right. Um, his head is sort of flanked by one ellipse here for his cheek. And another ellipse over here. With the other cheek. Um, then we have a little rectangle here. And then we also have a rectangle for his body. And two more rectangles for his legs, which would come like that. And 
I'll sit like this. So that's two rectangles tied together. Two big rectangles for these humongous feet. And then you have a couple of circles for his toes. Then you have some more rectangles going this way. Two sweet humongous. And you got more toes. Right, so more ellipses. And his hands here are some more long triangles. I mean triangles, more long rectangles. All right. And more rectangles this way. Just come down a little bit like that. Connect. And then they go up like so. And you have this big triangle. And some circles. And now you, we can say, let's add these rhombuses, rhombuses. And obviously I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do here in terms of being very light because I want you all to see it, right? That's why I keep telling myself to sleep at night. Like I don't want to hop it up pressing too hard on pages. Right, so that's Bugs Bunny in very basic shapes. And the thing about these basic, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't draw his other hand. So it's actually a connection of circles if, if you choose to see it that way. You know, you could also draw like triangle and I mean rectangle and um add the circles. So that's thumb. And this is like rectangles here. And circle at the end. I don't like this to get out of the wall there. Make it see them. Make it make sense. Alright, Bugs Bunny in a very simplified form. Okay, and he looks super, super strange, right? So this is where you can say, okay, while I still have my light stuff and I'm looking at my reference, um, uh, which could be added back to the screen. Yeah, so while I'm looking at my reference, I could look at the contours around the edges and say, huh, this actually kind of looks like him but it doesn't look like the picture, you know, but at least I have these basic shapes down. And if you're wise and you didn't um, put too much pressure on the people, you can actually make your, your subtle corrections, right? So as you're making subtle corrections to the contour, you can fix a little um, connection points, let's say here. And then here it looks like the ellipse should be much bigger, actually, you know, and it may actually help if I go the other route as well. So what I'll do is I'll do this little hair thingy. Fix the other ear.
And as you can see, this comes out a little bit more. And then this lips comes down a little bit more too. Um, so looks a little better. And there's a little piece of nose in here too, like so. So that's like the circle there, the eyes, more circles, more circles. More ellipses, I'm sorry. You can get these names right. This ellipse is much higher. Um, the eyebrows are actually up there. Let me bring this down. No, this is why you don't draw too dark. And that is the lips protruding from the face, which is much wider and comes down to about so. Lower lip. The bottom of the nose and upper lip. No M shape. See what I mean here? Because I didn't draw any shapes, I just freehanded it. I didn't realize that this lip must go lower. It's good to point out to yourself when you have a bad habit too. It helps you to fix it right away instead of acting like I meant to do that. So that's where the lip is supposed to go. Bottom lip there. This comes around top. Gives you room for those humongous teeth. It should start here. neck, no bird chest, so this would be like his inner neck, and you got an outer neck. <laughs> I really want to get better at accurate lines too. Okay. Let's draw these right quick. Remember what I said, um, there was an earlier um, segment where I talked about gesture lines. So a gesture line for him would be something like that, with that leg. So if you look at the image of Bugs, you'll see something similar going through his leg, and then the other leg comes through like that.
right? But this is what your eye immediately focuses on when Bugs Bunny is on the screen. All right, so we're going to continue going. And again, following that gesture, it goes like so. So that is a super rough sketch. Super rough. <laughs> super rough sketch of all Bugs Buddy. And of course, if you play around with the shapes a little bit, definitely don't do what I did and um, go super dark because it, you got to commit to whatever lines you make in that sense. Super rough sketch of bugs. By the end of the whole thing, you really don't see any of those shapes that you began with. Bootleg Bugs Bunny. There you go. All right. But um, all of that just came from a bunch of different shapes. And of course, I just rushed it for the purpose of the demonstration. You could definitely just go into more detail if you have a more detailed character. But notice how um, the gesture also helps 
with, uh, with the street. So if I show you the tattoo line here, then of course this would be his arm. Uh, and it just comes straight through like that. Right, and you can even um, another aspect of the gesture head um, perpendicular line just to show tilt of the head you know if I wanted to draw a human I could use something similar to that Maybe the head would be a little higher though yeah. I'll do it like that. So you're looking on side by side, very similar gesture. All right. And other than the long giraffe neck, you can play around with <laughs> you can play around with your gestures a little bit. I don't even put them like you because it, it, it helps you look loosen up and, and put stuff on the table and that'll help you to look at okay this is what I need um this is what this is like a cave girl geez <laughs> this is what I need to um work on in terms of my structure so I got the shapes down sure but the gestures off uh we'll get into gestures later but one one element at a time right so we can move on to something else. Let's say if you want to draw, I don't know, if you want to draw a car, let's say if you want to draw a car. Cars are kind of trickier, but also simpler. You know, it's, it's something that you can get rather easily because um, I don't call it just geometric shapes. You don't have to worry about anything fancy going on because you can just use geometry to make the shape of the car. And then you can add on the, the little flashy stuff later, right? But that's if you're looking at the diagram of the drawing of how a car is gonna look before it comes out, right? So that's the diagram of a car. And someone shows this to you and you, you panic. It's like, huh? <laughs> I'm supposed to draw what? You know, how did you draw that? But, um, you can draw it by totally starting with just a sideways rectangle. Wait a minute. So I'll draw a picture of it and then we'll go over it by breaking it down. You know, and again, if you want the opportunity to go over it with me, we can leave it up on screen. If not, then um, you can all just watch me do it. But you could just start out with a simple, let me not draw so close to the edge. Cause I never leave myself wrong. I'll tip number one, always leave yourself wrong. Okay, so let's start a little lower, me down here. Right, rectangle. Nothing intimidating about that. Then you may have um, circles. So far, so good. Looks like a sports car. Then you have this weird trapezius sort of thing going on at the top, right? This weird trapezoid. Uh, uh. Huh. Okay, cool. So far, so good. So, so far, we have rectangle, um, circles, trapeze, trapezoid, and let's say, I don't even remember what you would call this one. I think it's, it has its own name comes down like that.
Okay, now we got some windows. I'm like, this car looks like crap. <laughs> but let's say around the front side, you have um, these curves. Say you make them with circles. And around the back side, even though it's less curved, let's, let's still add the circles. Let's say two circles. And you can see from um, when the diagram was on screen, there are actually some very helpful diagonal lines that was a guide to how the front window and the door is angled. And then they do the same thing for the back door. Right, and I've never drawn this thing before in my life. So we'll see how this goes. But that's your front. You have your tire, which is actually a little closer to the front. So, and they were supposed to do. I didn't make no dark lines. But yeah, your circle is around here. You erase that other circle. Circles up front. So you have circles, rectangle, um, this shape, which could be bigger uh, in retrospect. We'll get to that when we get to the contours. Um, you have these two rounded figures here, just these two circles. You can use what you want too. You know. And then you have your other circle here, yeah, for your tire. So all of these other lines, it, it's like um, learning a language. And it's so complex that the easiest thing for you to do is just block, not, listen, not listen to half of it, right? So you kind of have to block out information that's not useful to you and utilize words that are, you know? So you may not know anything in Spanish except um, El baño, you know, <laughs> you, you may need to know what the bathroom is in Spanish, but that's about it. That may be the only thing you can use at the time. And then you start building off of what's useful, right? I know these circles are useful because they show me the tires, the rectangle is basically what I started off with. Um, circles also show me rounded figures. And after I get these basic shapes down, I can say, let me start the contours but i don't have to start deep just because i have these circles there right i can start very lightly with the contours given shape to this hood of the car and i can also note that there's angles in this car now so it doesn't go straight up like that on a straight diagonal and it doesn't um curve all the way over so there's very subtle um shapes to this car, but it, it is very much a very elongated elongated rectangle slash ellipse. And then of course we see that shape in between a negative space in between the tires and the actual chassis of the car. And that gives me a better idea of the chassis shape. I guess I should give this thing up some sort of grounding. Okay, so that's the ground.
and it looks like it's floating because the suspension is in, the suspension is impeccable. That's why it looks like it's floating. Uh, I can continue on with the chassis along the bottom. I see that it curves a little bit around this area. Uh, all you need to do is just make subtle um, observations. Make sure it has enough space back here. It's actually Let's this. If you hear me start whispering to myself, that means I'm getting into it. Okay. <laughs> um, then you have a circle. And I really don't want to spend too much time on this, so let me just speed it up a little bit. A little bit more. And that's around the back side. And I can continue on this line if I want, or I could come up here just to make sure everything is copacetic. Because I also want to make sure the top um, planes of the car are actually measured properly with the bottom. So I can see that front of the hood is closely aligned with the bottom tire. It's not here, but it's more like here. And this car is actually longer than I thought it was. Now that I look at the top, yeah, this whole section needs to go back, right? Which is again one of my bad habits of drawing eyes too deep before I actually have all of my measurements now. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. This is gonna have to move. Definitely. That looks like that. So that shape. Got the shape down, but not the size. So the next one I do and I'm, I'm gonna have to um, remember my own lesson on taking proper measurements, which is why review is so important. I think that's much more accurate to the sizing of this thing. And then maybe a rounding off right here. Something like that. Yeah, this is much shorter around here. This is a straight line, not a curve. And it comes down like so. comes back to that circular movement of that curve. Comes back down around. Curve go underneath. And goes this way. Which is why I need to move the tire. So this would be back light. I just draw a triangle. I mean, a rectangle here. And from there, I can tell that line tells me 
right here is where I need to be. It wasn't too bad. It was far off. Like I said, pay no attention to the floating car. This is where I start getting impatient and crazy with drones. Goes like so, which is why lines are important. There's this shape, I'll show you where the mirror. Sort of looks like a rectangle. Sort of. It has a rounded edge over here. A little shape over here. And then it goes up. I'll mark this over. Okay, wow, you can actually see the, this is a super detailed drawing. You can actually see the front windshield. Yeah, I didn't notice that. This isn't so high, so it's like so. And then this would be like so. And I'm just playing around with different shapes and lines. So, going along with that, I don't know. So, might as well dark in this middle. The lateral, so yeah. it looks like a human eye. And if you want to get fun, you could draw this in uh, too. But I think that is enough, just in terms of yeah, that's a car, right? I uh, only need to pay attention to the beginning stages and just start learning and playing around with it. You know, so there's your car. Right? I can erase all the other lines, um, but I have a basic shape of the car. I'm from there, you know, I can refine it if I don't go through my messed up habit of. Um, really committing to these lines too early, right? Committing to these lines so soon that I'm not capable of making any other corrections a little later on. Um, but yeah, car, there you go, bingo. Ta-da. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, how's everyone following along so well? I know I'm, I'm just drawing and talking out loud and I do that anyway, but at least with you all here, I don't feel like I'm crazy. But um, I'm just drawing and talking out loud. But is it making sense to you all? You know, just being spectators? Are you all, uh, is anyone following along? Um, but on this side, I wanted to try a dog next. So I'm gonna try the dog. And then after that, call it a night. But this one, I'm going to try to break my horrible habit of A, committing to lie too soon, 
B, you know, I'm mapping on the top of my database. Oh, okay. I know radio was following the bug. Cool. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing our block scene. It looks like Kenfold. <laughs> okay, so now the dog should be popping up in here now. And then after that, it will basically be the, the end of this thing. But just playing around with this is, um, I don't know, super helpful and um, super useful. Um, Sovereign says is following along with the session, but we'll draw the bugs. It's funny, called later on. All right. I'm interested in seeing how they all turn up, um, especially since you'll have a lot more time to pause it and be perfected in this. Um, so let's see, the small space I got, we have a circle. All right, I'm trying to look at the screen and draw at the same time. I was drawing while looking at the screen. Okay, so we have a circle here, but we have what look like two triangles on each side, right? So if you look at them like downward facing triangles, it's one air. One air, another air, and you have a circle you can find here. So let's say the muzzle. That would be nose and mouth in one. Next we have a thick a thick neck dog. Alright, we have um, a rectangle basically. And then we got a bunch of crazy shapes after that. <laughs> no, we got um, what can almost be a diagonal freaking rectangle. I'll show you what I mean. It looks sort of like, let me make sure I map these points up, because I was going to draw it here. But as you can see, the air, if you come down from this air on the image, you'll see that the Farthest point is here. This already looks off. What looks off about this? I think the head should be a little wider. Yeah. Or maybe it doesn't need to be wider. Maybe I need to just bring the leg in along with the air. So, this will be about here. And then I'm drawing a line from basically here to this point. Should I lower it? Yeah. Let's say right here. The angle, angle may be off. You're right um, on a radio. I think that angle may be off. This angle should be right this way. Thank you. You got it. Okay, so let's get that to triangle there. I mean, if you call them rectangle triangles, I'm doing that all night. Okay, so what about from here to here? But I'll do that because, like I did in the past, I didn't give myself no room. But I think that's far enough in terms of the angle of the back. So, uh, Bob, I'm getting good at these lines, so. I can draw the rectangle. It actually looks like it comes closer in. 
so it won't be a perfect rectangle. It'll probably be curved, I'll say, at the contours. Look at the dog's abdomen is much thinner than the rib cage. Of course, I can close that. It is a circular shape in here. Um, I mean, just mapping out simple shapes. This would be like um. Very thin rectangle. I'm just gonna cut it again. And the other one should be in alignment with the mouth. Yes, I could use construct line too, right? This would be the dog center line from the face. So this lets me know this leg should be at least around here. Why does it look weird? Because this comes around here. That's why it looks weird. Thought about construction. Yeah, me too. I almost forgot I had them. Pick up all these tools and you forget you got them. a little more a little more dog like and you have this hind leg coming around almost like a circle and you have this other hind leg over here almost like another circle see that and other pork comes out around this area I think I got to draw that down and then other pork comes out a little lower a long pole. It doesn't really start there. I would say that might be more like it. Okay. And this is just shapes. Nothing fancy. Um the triangle there for the nose. You got his tongue out. No more jaw. Right. I don't even need to finish this one, but you can clearly tell as a dog, right? As a dog. Um, and then you can add your, your contour lines on the outside of it, um, starting from the head. Dog's cranium is typically like that.
probably send the odd that horse line though. Not until I make sure everything's lined up. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Okay, it's kind of hard to see with all that um, black out there. So I'll, I'll just make something up. straight diagonal and then it comes around like so Trying to do this dog justice. Mess up the drawing of a dog, your yeah, art career is over. This don't even look like him, but it looks like a dog close enough. <laughs> Shapes ain't no joke though. I think it helps a lot, but I think it takes a lot of practice to really get into it too. I would always use, I don't know, I would use shapes in the past the way I use writing in cursive. You can see some cursive letters coming out, but I always switch back to print eventually. Rabbit foot. Yeah. Abdomen, a little bit of fur. You got this built chest. Oh, look, you've been doing push ups. You've been working out. arm actually starts down here. That looks a little bit more. See that's there. Leave that there. See that's there. And that's the rest of them.
Okay, I think I'm ending this up. I'm gonna finish up right here. If anyone, um, he got a face left, but it's all good. Hey, you know, you gotta hook him up, man. Gotta hook him up. I think I'll end it off right there. Let's give him a black coat. He got tiny feet too, I right? just see that. He got mouse feet. <laughs> I'm gonna fix Robo. No, I ain't gonna fix him, but you know what I mean. No dogs are harmed in the making of destroying. Yeah, but that's your dog. Dog. All right. <laughs> so we drew a couple of things based on shapes. We drew a dog. We drew a car. We drew a bootleg Bugs Bunny. And um, learn a little bit about shapes. Willfully, it was informative. It was definitely interesting. Um, getting back to this one because I hadn't really um. I hadn't really stuck to it because there's so much um, there's so much going around that really um, they don't teach shapes without teaching form, you know, and I try to keep them separate uh, as we go into form um, next draw, you'll see why it was so difficult to keep them separate. Right. But um, for now, I think using shapes to simplify complex forms. And then um, after you break them down, you can put them back together. I think it's a very useful skill. It helps with people watching or going out into um, just going out into nature or even going out into cities, whether you want to draw people or birds that are flying around or even buildings. It helps to be able to deconstruct the form, um, simplify it with simple shapes, and then um, recreate it using various various other techniques but i think with even these these three um but these two really because we only really went over lines and forms you know i mean lines and shapes so when we get to forms it's going to be that much better when we get to um values and textures and colors um and space you know it's going to be so much cooler to see all these elements come together and utilize them in a very uh, cohesive manner, you know, like how I had to, <laughs> we had to pull the construction lines out the hat, you know, or even just drawing the regular lines from point A to point B. It's that much simpler when you practice drawing lines, um, like just practice being very deliberate about the lines you draw and how quickly and accurately you can draw. All right, but that's it, you know. Good night. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for coming through, and I'll definitely see you all next time. All right, peace.